Hey everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. We are here with Dean DaCosta. Um, I know you are all just craving one of these tools, tips, and tricks webinars. We are really excited. This is Solving the Mystery of Sourcing in Code Repositories, Websites, and Tech Communities. And Dean just informed me that's only a little of what we'll do today. So I think he has a bit more to go through. So while we're waiting for everyone to log in, we'll just go through a couple of uh, items that we need to cover. Uh, you are in listen-only mode. That means that you can hear us, but we can't hear you. That's okay. If you have any questions, just use the sidebar that says questions in your GoToWebinar side panel. Um, I will write those down and send them Dean's way when it's appropriate. Share, we're live, use the R Daily hashtag to share all over social media. If you know anyone who could benefit from this, just send it their way. They can go ahead and join even though we're started. And we are recording. You will receive a copy of the slide deck and this video after the webinar. So please keep that inbox open and make sure you whitelist info at recruitingdaily.com. Okay, Dean, this is where we pull you in. How are you doing today? Hey, Dean. Oh, it looks like we lost Dean. <laughs> so let's wait and see if he logs back in. Let's just give him a second here. We still have quite a few people logging in. And by the way, my name is Ashley, just in case you haven't been on for one of the webinars I've hosted. I'm part of the Recruiting Daily team, and it is always a blast to uh, to host these. If you have any questions or if you need anything whatsoever um, pertaining to this webinar, please feel free to email me, ashley at recruitingdaily.com. And we'll also have Dean's contact information for you as well. His email is at the bottom of this slide, and when you receive the copy of this deck, you'll be able to click straight through. Hey, Dean, you there? Well, guys, I'm going to have to get in contact with Dean and see if I can pull him back into this webinar. It looks like he was disconnected for some reason. I wish we had hold music, but we don't. <laughs> so if you don't mind holding for just one moment, I will find him and bring him back in. Thanks. Oh, there you are. Who are you talking to? Hey, Dean. We lost you there for a second. I've been on the whole time. Have you? Okay, well, maybe it's my connection. Okay, well, I just wanted to hand this over to you. Um, for those of you who don't know Dean, he is, let's see here, get back where we are. He is the Enterprise Sourcing Practice Lead of Lockheed, Lockheed Martin. Um, Dean, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Not really. I'm not good at that. Um, no? <laughs> well, no, it's not one of my fortes. Um, I'm, you know, I've been recruiting sourcing for about 30 years. Um, I speak at different conferences. I work at Lockheed Martin and and I try, I try my best to help as many people as I can. Um, and it goes back to my first recruiting job where I was basically thrown to a computer and said, source, no training, no nothing. And yes, we did have computers back then, believe it or not. And um, yeah, so I try my best, along with others, of course, to help uh, as many people as possible, um, you know, just learn how to source properly or find different places to source that maybe they didn't think of and, and just get better. That's really it. Well, we are really excited to have you here, as always. So thank you so much for that. And I'm going to just give you the screen and let you go for it. 
All right, well, that's going to be fun because now I got to figure out how to take the screen. Every okay, time. I'm just. <laughs> well, it is all yours. Oh, there we go. Show them there, my screen. There you are. <laughs> okay, which screen do we see? Are we seeing the Seahawks logo? Yes. Excellent. Then we're. I can move this over to here. I can shrink this here. I'll let you keep an eye on the uh, question so I don't need to worry about it. All right, so. Uh, the title of this is supposed to be Dev Sites and I, and we are going to go through a plethora of Dev Sites and what you can do. We're also going to look at some tools, and I'm going to uh, look look at a few different things. Um, so one of the first things I want to do is go to this site called dev.to. And this is an interesting site that I came across a while back. Um, basically, it's for developers, to help developers, by developers, for developers, and a partridge in Petri. So for this site we're going to do a very simple search i'm going to pick on java if somebody has a programming language or something they would like me to pick on and see what we can do to help i'm more than willing to but you got to kind of let me know um there we go so top 10 websites to learn coding job applies on blah 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 blah. that's an example so you got all these ones down injuries to unit testing whatever let's go ahead and pick on this one only because i like the picture so one of the things I like here on in this site is these are developers writing this. This isn't um, me writing it. Uh, in terms of unit test, yeah, I, or anything. These are actual developers. What I like about it is every single article, every single anything you're gonna see, it's gonna have their name and usually some type of a way to socially find them. So if I follow the breadcrumbs and take this to its next place, which is GitHub look what we get we get this young jedi's um github base now forget all the tools you see before me because we're not going to use any of them to go ahead and find this young jedi's email address we're going to do it the foolproof method the free method so we're going to go into one of his repo to the repositories which is cool and we're going to pick one i don't really care which one we're just going to pick one, pick one. we're going to pick rent car whatever the heck that is and what we're going to do when we get here is we're going to go to commits and we got all his commits and we're going to open a commit now to open the commit it's always these little number things here. and we're going to open it up and we're going to go to the url up here and you're going to see all this stuff here now i'm going to be honest with you i always get the two different versions of this method uh mixed up so we're going to try this one first voila there it is all i did was put dot patch after the url and if you look at the second line there's his email and that works for every single solitary person on GitHub. I have yet to find somebody that doesn't work, and I've gone through thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people. So if you can get to their GitHub profile, I don't care if you, where you find them. If you can find them, if you can get to their GitHub profile, you have instantaneous access that um, to their email address. And so that's an example of how no site, no anything can be hidden from you if you just follow a few breadcrumbs and, and, and go where they are. And in this case, like I say, we started way back here on this site, dev.to, which is just a site for developers to do whatever they're going to do. And we just followed the breadcrumbs. And we found somebody who is a developer who we can now email and decide what I want, why I love Java. Here's a, someone who wrote something about why he loves Java. Well, I'm glad he loves Java. And once again, look at this Twitter, GitHub. We go right into our GitHub. We're going to do this one more time so everybody makes sure we got it. Um, in this case, I have an email address right there, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to pretend like it's not there. Uh, and we're just going to use the same methodology. We're going to go into a repository. We're going to pick one. I always just tend to pick the first one just because it's easy. We're going to go into the commits. There's 448 of them. We're going to find the one that has the same picture of them or at least, okay, see, that's not him. So now we have to find the one that has his picture on it for his commit. And we may not. We may have to go to a different a different one of these um, until we find one that has his a commit that he actually performed. But once we do, I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, Go in here and show you one more time. We're going to go into the commit, and at the very end, after the funky uh, letters and numbers that designate uh, what what commit this is, we're going to do dot p a t c h, enter, and the second line down is his email. We also get his full name there too, just in case it wasn't already there. And there you go. 
that's how simple that specific dev site, and you're gonna find a pattern here with these dev sites. A lot of these dev sites um, have these types of, this type of information available. All you gotta do is find them. Um, now, I know some of you are thinking, well, if they're all on GitHub, what do I really need to go this way? But you may not find them on GitHub. GitHub is not the most easily searchable place there is. And sometimes they may not pop up based on how you searched. Um, so this way is another way to search that can just get you what you want a little bit easier than what And speaking of Git, GitHub, this is a tool which I find very interesting. It's literally new. I think it's about a week old. Start searching. It lets you search, you guessed it, on GitHub. But look at how it's set up. It's set up actually quite interesting. Um, because it, it brings you a whole lot of information in front of you that perhaps you didn't have before. So if I pick on, I'm not gonna pick on Java this time, I'm gonna pick on Ruby this time. And so, and I'm gonna pick, and let's pick Seattle because I'm in Seattle. So the first person I see is Ryan Florence, GitHub. He's got 5,146 followers, which is really good. He's got a Roku score of 40, which is bad. These are his language, CoffeeScript, CSS, Java, PHP, Ruby. Um, I find that these are alphabetical, so don't, uh, I don't know if most of you know, but when people put their programming languages in there, by nature, it's one of two ways. It's either alphabetical or it's really based on how comfortable they are, how good they think they are with it. If it's alphabetical, it's probably the system like here that's doing it. But when they write a resume, if it's not alphabetical, it's subconsciously almost always going to be in the order of how good they think they are. Um, it's a subconscious thing um, that people do. And... Um, it's kind of like the whole idea that if they're using a particular username in one place, they're probably doing it in another place and they probably have an email with it. It's just human nature. It's just subconscious stuff. And so you're going to find a lot of times if they're not, if their languages aren't alphabetical, they are in order of how good they feel they are. It doesn't mean they're that good, mind you, but it's how good they feel they are. One of the reasons I like this, even though it is still a GitHub thing, is one, it does give you access to the GitHub people, which is cool. Number two, I like this quick, simple, and easy. And I like to know how often, how, when was the last time he, his last contribution was a year ago. That, that kind of is interesting. So I'm going to go into his GitHub profile and we're going to see if that's actually accurate. And as, and it's actually not accurate. Uh, his last contribution was not a year ago. His last contribution was uh, July 31st, so 13 days ago, which is fine. I really don't care about how accurate this. We have his Twitter handle here. We already know how to find his email address. We've done it a dozen times, and so I'm not going to do it again. Um, so there you go. Now, the fact that this isn't accurate doesn't bother me because I really don't give a flying flip about that. What I care about is how easy it is to search compared to GitHub, where you have to put in language, colon, location, colon, and all that stuff, or or you have to do an x-ray search. I like the fact that this is simple and easy. Somebody's a Star Trek fan, um, and that's what I like about it. Um, so it's cool. It hasn't been around very long. Um, they're still indexing. As you can see, there's a lot more people that have Ruby and Seattle than 152. So it, they're still indexing. But it is good. It's pretty. It's simple. Um, so we are going to get off the path of dev sites for a moment because I find this particular thing very interesting. It's called Instagram. It's called Pick Your Instagram Online, whatever you want to call it. And what I find interesting about it is the ease at which you can source in Instagram. So there are a thousand and five posts about Java development. And here they are. And I love stuff like this because this is really simple and easy to to work on, to figure things out and to figure out who people are. Um, and, and you can search in it many ways. Like this person's been, he's an IT consultant, whatever. We're gonna get in, we're gonna go ahead and click on him. And this is what we get out of him. So we get his pick of deer media. Okay, whatever. This is his, a picture of him. Uh, he's recent to it, recent post, I should say, at 1099 this morning. That's his username. We get all this neat, cool little stuff, comments, likes, Mitt Det Benny. Um, and that's his, that's his, this whole, little thing here now i don't believe he's here in america based on some of the language i think that's actually german i believe i don't know but anyway but we have a lot of info here that we can go on to try to figure out who he really is and it wouldn't be that hard to do to be quite honest with you all of them wouldn't be hard to do and there are some tools that actually will find you content information on um sites like this but this is a really cool site and it's simple to search compared to the actual um 
the, compared to uh, Instagram itself. It's so easy. Um, and that's what the only reason why I decided to show you this is because it's here. I mean, this person, they're in India. Okay, fine. They got code sitting right here. His, that, that's his username. I'm pretty sure if we really wanted to, we could probably do a check on his Instagram, on this username and probably find him somewhere. Uh, join the community, the best developers, programming, uh, web dev, Android, join our Telegram group, blah, blah, blah. I mean, there's a lot of info here to figure out who he really is. Followers, just so much info. Um, I'd be willing to bet you if we did a, if we go ahead and we just did a search on just his username alone, which is Coding Boy, we would find him in other places. He's not going to use it just here. Nobody does. They always, you can almost always guarantee they have other places that they use the same, um, the same username. Let's see if by chance, um, This particular tool actually, yeah, it doesn't work on this particular site yet. Uh, but this is Instagram. But I wanted to show it to you because I think it's really cool and something I ran across not too long ago. I was like, oh wow, that's really actually quite, uh, quite uh, interesting. Um, I'm very into just things that are just different than what you would expect um, because you know everybody's searching in certain places, and I like to find people in places that others don't find. I'm not going to bug you with Stack Overflow because I think it's a completely waste of time. So I am going to bug you with this, though. Um, this is a literally brand new site or fairly new site, and they have freelancers in your cities. They don't have a lot of people yet. But every time I come in here, these numbers grow. Like New York City was only like 15 about three days ago. Now there's 29 of them. So this is a site where you might want to consider searching in um, from time to time as it grows and see what's here. Like Seattle 3, let's get real. We have more than three people. But these are people that you may not find in other places. I'm not, I don't care about their daily rate. I care about the fact that I have an email address and their website sitting right here in front of me. That's all I care about. Um, you know, and then of course how good they are at some point I'm gonna to wanna to see, but I can go to the links and see that. But it's a newer site, but every time I go in it, it grows and grows and there's more people. And so I'm really big about knowing these people uh, and knowing who they are. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead to this site. It's called MPM, uh, Build Amazing Things. Um, it's it's a neural plus or minus. It's, it, it's a site where you'll see a lot of, um, developers and stuff. Uh, I am going to pick on Java again here only because I know I've done it before. Um, and I just want to see what we get. Let's, we'll give it a minute or two. Um, I haven't even joined. I'm not even signed in yet. So just, just letting you know, whatever we're going to get, we're going to see and go. So here's what we get. We're getting code. So these people, exact that bridge API to get code, Java, blah, 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 blah. We got all these. I'm going to pick on this one, Joe Ferrer, whatever his name is. Let's get in here. First of all, look, again, his GitHub and Twitter are sitting right there in front of my face. I don't even need to go any further. I can just go right in and go into his GitHub and get his email. And so this is another site where it's the same thing. It's a code repository, a code, uh, a place where developers go to do their thing, to work with other people, to do things. And you can actually find people and ways to contact. Let's go into S Lawrence real quick. Um, let's see. Now, notice here we don't get a whole lot here, but we do get his name. Okay, and that's really pretty important. The fact that we have his name. Let's actually go into this particular thing generator and see if there's any other info in here. It might be able to work. You got your readmes. You got your discrepancy, your dependence, your variations. Not a whole lot here that I think is going to really help us. Um, so what we would have to do here is probably go ahead and we know we looked for Java and do a cross reference of his name, look for him somewhere else. So let's see what we can do. And we know Java is involved there. So let's go ahead and try him on Facebook. I'm using the zap info tool to allow me to just quickly see if I can find him. Okay. So there's several of them, uh, which one it is actually, there's only one using his exact name of Nicholas. So that would be that one. So that could be him. We'd have to do a little more research that particular, uh, Facebook doesn't always have the best info. I would probably try to cross reference either on GitHub or on LinkedIn. So let's start there. Okay. Uh, Nicholas C. Zakis. Let's open this bad boy up. And what we're looking for here is to know if Java or Java is involved in one of his languages. We already know JScript is because I see it right here. He mentions JScript. So let's see. What was he playing with? He was playing with 
generated Eastland, Eastland tester. So he's playing with a few tools. So let's go into his repositories. And this is something really cool and see if there's anything in here that might make us think it's him. I'm not seeing anything that cross references to any of the ones I looked at first, but I'd be willing to bet you if I kept looking, eventually one of these things is also over here on GitHub. I'm fairly confident this is him. Um, and the reason why I say that is because the name is kind of unique. Um, and so I wouldn't expect a whole lot of people with his name. I'm fairly confident this is him. Um, but, you know, it's something you can play around with and try to figure out more. Uh, the other thing we could have done if we wanted to is search based on his username instead and see where that's at. So for this, we're going to use a tool called search all and Google because and see where he's at. So, well, Eslint. So he works for this company, Eslint. Oh, no, it and his developer, Nicholas C. Zakos, which guess what that means? That means that person that we saw when we cross-referenced, that was him. So we've we've just proven that that person we saw when we cross-referenced saying that's him. So that's how you can use a site like NPM to find people. And it's not simple, it's not easy. And that's the thing here, guys, not all recruiting and sourcing is simple. Hey, I'm gonna go on LinkedIn and find people. Um, to be quite frank with you, if that's all you got, then that's great for now. But when the tides turn and uh, there are more, pe more um, people than jobs, it's not gonna be, you know, that ain't going to work because people aren't going to want to see the people on LinkedIn. They're already managers tired of seeing people on LinkedIn. So eventually, at some point, things are going to change. So you really need to understand how to do the basics. And not to mention, in fact, tools come and go. What will happen if LinkedIn closes doors tomorrow? If LinkedIn closes doors because they're tired of different tools being using them or people grabbing all the info or whatever their excuse is, um, so what are you all going to do? Uh, these methods I'm teaching you guys will be with you forever. So this is a site, uh, um, and it's a Ruby site, <laughs> which is really pretty cool because there aren't a lot of sites just to Ruby for Ruby. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in something since it's nothing but Ruby. Um, I'm going to put in the word install and just go. Now, these are all in written in Ruby because that's all the site is. And you get here, and you'll see the owner. You'll see authors. You see that. So I'm going to go into the owners first. OK, email me. Let's see what happens if I open that up. Oh my god, it opens up to his email. How interesting. All of them are like that. Every single person has an email, me. And that's how simple it is to find Ruby people. Really, really simple. Now I'm going to digress for a minute or back off for a minute and show you something. And the reason I'm doing this is for a couple of reasons. Sometimes you're going to find email addresses, and you're going to need to have a little more info on them. And um, I'll show you what I mean by that in a few minutes. Um, this tool called Spiderfoot is an OSINT tool. It's a really good OSINT tool. Um, for those of you that don't know, I just wrote a book, uh, OSINT for the Staffing World. It's the first book about OSINT for the staffing world. And it, it explains all these tools and intelligence. And I give you some gifts and toys and tricks and, tri and stuff. It's on Amazon. I'd recommend you get it um, because it'll help you understand OSINT better. But all I did, all I started with was one person's email, not even in the US. He was actually in another country. And look at everything I got. I got the email validated. I found out that he's linked to several code repositories, found out he's linked to usernames, and then I found out he's also done a lot of stuff on Wikipedia, all from one email. And so Spiderfoot is a really cool tool that can do that for you. Now there's two versions. This is the one I prefer only because um, it gets you a lot of information. The other version of it is web-based, and you can get some information, but you don't get as much with this one and without paying for it. And so, we you know, I'm trying to give you stuff that you don't have to pay for. That particular version of Spiderfoot is free. This version of Spiderfoot, which is the web-based version, is not free. So I just recently did one on my on my phone number. It's unlisted and it verified yes, it's a good phone number and 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 verified who owns it. Okay, great, yay! If I paid, it would do a lot more. Um, but I'm not interested in paying for it when this one is free and can get me all this. I mean, from one email, I got all this. Now you're probably going, okay, great, but how would I get? How would emails help me? 
Um, where am I going to get just female things? Well, for that kind of stuff, you're looking at things called pasting sites. Uh, one example, um, this is the SSAR page that I created. I've I created, for those of you who don't know it, it's a big, huge site full of more tech tools than you can shake a stick at. Um, there's two of them, SSAR uh, and then SAR2. Um, the links can be found on the SourceCon web page, um, SourceCon Facebook page. They can be found in the book I just told you about, along with some other things. I've got a couple of, um, I got a couple of other uh, OSINT sites listed in the book. You can only find in the book. So they're there as well. Um, but that said, let me find what I really want to show you. Um, and I'm going to use this page, this particular page to do it because this is um, my personal page and it's got less stuff on it. And that's just because I like less, you know, I, I have certain things like everybody, we all have our go-to stuff and shoot. And uh, these are my go more of my go-to things. Um, let's see here. I want to find the pasting sites ones. Um, I've created a lot of custom searches that are just for. Hey, Dean. Yes, ma'am. Wow. While you're searching, I just wanted to let you know that we have a few very specific questions for searches oh, that have means. come up. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Not well, if you like, I can hold those till the end. But what was the name of your book again? We have another question. All right. Well, it, the name of the book is um, the new book anyway, is um, OSINT for the Staffing World. You can find it on Amazon. It's right here, as a matter of fact. Awesome. I'm going to type this in the chat. So, so there you go. It's only $12.99 or $2.99 for the Kindle. I don't try to, I don't, I don't try to um, gouge people. I'm not spending, asking you to spend 50 bucks on a book um, because I don't believe in that. Um, but it's a really cool book. And like I said, for those of you who don't really know what OSIN is or intelligence in general, I go through everything on it. Um, I explain all the different types of intelligence, what it is. I explain to you what the levels of the web are, how to stay as safe as possible on the web, the tools you can use to do it. It's a pretty cool book. Um, so far, everybody that's read it has told me they really liked it, but you know, and it's got one customer review who liked it. I don't know what it is. People don't like, like writing customer reviews. But that said, let's get back to what we're doing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this CSC that I created. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in um, the word Java. Actually, I'm going to put in the, the word um, Java. And then in quotes, I'm going to put in gmail.com. Now, what these are, pasting sites are places that are like, places where people just put code and stuff temporarily to do it. In this case, like we even just from GitHub is sitting here, but it's not just just, it just literally any pasting site you can imagine will be here. But let's just go for an example with this one. So if I had this this gist from GitHub and I had a little bit of information here, but I had an email, I could use this email in Spiderfoot and get all the other information I need on them. I would be able to get usernames, um, any other sites that, that that this email address is associated with, um, verify it's a good email, of course, all sorts of really, 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 really cool stuff that uh, I can get from this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the word paste and see if I can get to the actual pasting sites rather than just, but unfortunately, just does like to pop up first because it is a really cool, simple pasting site. So there we go. Here's paste bin. That's what I wanted. I wanted to get into a paste bin site. So here's an example where somebody was doing something about Java and just decided to do all this great stuff as it relates to it. And evidently, if I look at this, um, this may not be anything. Let's zoom down here. Boom, 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 boom. So this person was doing something as it relates to Java, because it's about Java. And he's got all these people's email addresses sitting here of people who have um, does done something. And you see, you'll notice down here you have Wells Fargo. You'll notice you have a credit score. So this is interesting. Somebody did a class about finding this types of information using Java. But look at the emails we have here. Some of these people, probably most of them, are Java developers. And that's really cool because you can now take that email and use a tool like um, use a tool like um, uh, Spiderfoot to figure out more information about them. Here's more people here: GitHub, Financial, Carbon Helmet, blah blah blah, Applet. So this person created an applet in with Java, 
and here's the email of one of the people do it. So now you copy this and you can go ahead and stick it in Spiderfoot and Spiderfoot will tell you all the rest about the person. But look at all these emails and you guarantee these are all developers. So that's where it comes in handy. And this um, this custom search engine can be found on the SSAR page or the SSAR2 page. I'm not sure where it's, it's a custom search engine. So I think it's on SSAR, but it could be on two. I had to split them up because there was just too much information and it was getting really hard for people to find stuff. So that's why I split it up into two. So anyway, so that's Spiderfoot in a nutshell. And I'm gonna go ahead and close Spiderfoot. I'm not big on leaving things open. That's part of Spiderfoot too. I have to close all of it. Um, so are there any questions before I keep going? Cause I'm gonna keep going. Okay, code, we, go ahead. Uh, we do have a couple of questions about specific sure. searches. Do you have time to do those right now in the middle of the presentation? Well, why not? Well, can you show us some procedures for finding sales engineers? I know um, Matthew is referring to the very first tool that you went over. Okay, so can we be more specific on sales engineers? Sales engineer is a kind of nebulous title. Um, there are a lot of other titles that do sales. Um, okay. And then there's pre-sales engineers, post-sales engineers. I mean, there's it, there's more to it than just sales engineers. Um, having worked in the consulting world before, I do I, I kind of get that. So what I'm going to do while you do that, this gives Sorry. me a perfect opportunity to you to show you guys a tool that I have um, been playing with for a while that I really 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 like um, called Rockstar Finder. You guys have seen it out there and stuff like that. So one of the reasons I like it so much is because while it will find people on LinkedIn, that's not where it searches. It doesn't search LinkedIn first and then bring it back. It searches everywhere else and then connects the dots. So if they have a LinkedIn profile, you'll see it. But if they don't, it doesn't matter. They'll still find it. So you want, you want to say sales engineer. Let's just see what we got. Okay. So and what we kind? Do have, we do have an answer for you whenever you're ready. Packaging machinery. Oh, look, why don't we make it, why we're at it, why don't we look for job developers that can also drill for oil and swim underwater without breathing? I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> packaging, packaging, packaging sales engineer. Wow. Packaging. You know what I think I would do for this search is I would do it much different. And here's why. Let's and a city. Uh, we're at a particular location by chance. Any Matthew, location? if you have a location, send it my way and I'll pass it along. Well, I'm going to do it my way. Then. I'm just going to search for Washington <laughs> State. New when England. It's down, not too late. I'll go back to <laughs> it. So here we go. The reason why I did it this way is I don't believe, and and I could be wrong, and I'm sure I am, that there are going to be people that call themselves packaging sales engineers, but you will find people that are sales engineers that have packaging experience. You said New England. So um, by the way, New England's not a state, point of note, um, package. So I'm going to have to pick the different states that are in New England. And that's OK. So now I got to remember my geography. Great. You guys need to remember I was not born in this country, so I do not know all the geography of the United States. Um, actually, I kind of do. All right. So let's try it now. Maine. So. We went with Maine first, only because it was just simpler. This thing's in my way, and that's in my way. So let's see if we can get down another way. The bad part of having a lot of tools is sometimes it's hard It's hard to move things so you can see. Okay, let's move that down here. There we go. Now we can get over here. Got to talk to them. Okay, so we got a whole bunch of different things here. Um, Let's tr let's go in here and narrow it down. I don't know why it keeps removing pack unless I'm spelling or packaging. I, I, I'm a trusting I'm not moving around. There we go. Now let's search. There we go. So we got 656 people that are sales engineers, but also have the word packaging. Now you'll know the sales, marine, shipping, and packaging supplies. So that's not what you're looking for. So doing it this way is going to require you to maybe put in another buzzword to get where you want. What specific packaging? What industry? What any other info? We've got Connecticut. So that's a state. No, no I'm not looking for yes cities right now. I need other keywords. 
he's listening closely, so I, I will okay. have speed. Okay, that might, okay. That's Thanks, Matthew. Another one, okay, so high speed can be spelled one word or two. We're gonna try the two word version of it first. Okay, so there's 921 that have the words high speed and packaging. Now, these are not going to be perfect. You're probably gonna have to look into them to figure out which ones work best. Some of these are on LinkedIn, some of them are not on LinkedIn. Uh, you can pretty much see which ones are and aren't. Um, but there's a lot of them you're gonna have to figure, you're probably gonna need to put in more buzzwords to get really narrowed down what you want in this particular tool. Um, but it definitely can be done. What I'm gonna try to do up here is I'm gonna try that and just see if I can get away with it. Okay, and then I'm gonna get rid of these two, these two buzzwords. And I'm gonna research packaging, packaging sales engineer. Let's see if that actually gets us anything, only in name, mind you. Okay, that got us a few people. So that's good. Um, yeah, that got us a few people, 285. So there you go. Um, you'd have to look into each one to decide which ones are which. Some of these are higher level than others. Um, but there you go. You'll have to open up and actually read the profile to actually see um, if they fit or not, but there you go. I like this tool because like I said, though they find people on LinkedIn, that's not where they they actually go. They do not do anything on LinkedIn. They find the information in other places and then they cross reference and bring it into you. So some people will have LinkedIn profiles, some people won't. That's why I, I kind of like the tool and they find you contact information. And that's something I really like as well. Um, so um, I hope that helped you. Um, you know, what you're looking for is not something that is going to be found in the sites that I'm, sh a lot of the sites I'm showing right now. Um, what I might consider doing is seeing, let's see. Uh-oh, it don't want to work. Too many things going on. Oh, there we go. Too many things going on at once. Let's fix this. Packaging sales engineer. Not feeling good about this. I'm going to tell you that. Let's just see if that gets us anything first. And then we'll worry about specific locations once we see if that actually even gets a thing. The reason why I'm in Facebook and not LinkedIn and other places, because LinkedIn, Facebook has 3.5 billion people and LinkedIn's got four, 610 if you believe the numbers. So I'm always going to go where there's more, just a fact. Um, now, how long this search is going to take? Don't know. A lot of it's going to depend on other things like, um, you know, how fast the internet is, which considering I'm connected to you all, it may take a little while. Um, I'm just getting rid of a few things, hoping it'll speed it up. I do have a lot going on up here. And every single Chrome extension working, it does take up some of the resources. I'm not going to wait long for this, though. Packaging sales engineer. I see everything's spelled right. So I'm going to actually copy, because I don't want to waste too much time. And I'm going to fold this, and I'm going to cheat. Well, not cheat. I'm going to do it differently, because I don't want to wait on them. So give me a minute. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and do this the old-fashioned way. Again, not sure if I'll actually find anything or not. That is a long title, and I'm, I'll be curious if a lot of people on Facebook actually put it in the title. Yeah, something's going on because even Google's slow. Ah, that's what's going on. Let's trample that and cut that for a while. That'll help speed things up. All right, so I'm going to keep moving on to other things because I don't until everything quickens up because I don't want to waste too many people's time. I will get back to that in a minute. I would be willing to bet you if you use a tool like a seek out or a hire tool, you'd find a boatload of them. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, there's another way to do this. Let's see if 411 will open because this is free. Well, what I'm going to show you of it is free, and this could actually find you some good people if it, if it ever hurries up. Everything is running slow. Uh, let's go to Code Pen and do this while we're waiting for it to catch up to me. I know I move around a lot and I'm really fast and I apologize. It's just, I don't like to wait. And so while this is opening, I'm gonna show you guys other things and we will get back to the packaging. I will not forget, I've actually gone ahead and pasted, and pasted it into my little Word doc over here to remind me to go ahead and look for it. So if there's something else while we're waiting, we'll get back to that in a minute.
<laughs> oh, we do God, have something else. About it. Go ahead. If you have time, what is the name of the free OSINT Spiderfoot version you mentioned and versus the paid version? The Well, they're both called Spiderfoot. Um, and you'll have, when you go to the site, you'll have the option of which, of, of which version you want to play with. Um, you know, you'll be able to, you'll see both of them there. Um, really pay attention to the directions for the free one, for the 100% free one, because um, it, it's, it's not as simple to use, obviously, as the paid one. Um, doesn't require coding at all, but you got to follow the directions. Um, the link to it's in my book, as well as the directions on I'm putting it in, um, installing is in my book, but you can find it on their web page. Like I said, everything is moving so slow right now that um, I'm almost afraid to even try to get into anything. Uh, I don't know why my internet's all of a sudden decides it's gonna go slow. I don't have anything going on in the background other than this, so I'm gonna actually close everything except for this and see if maybe I can free up resources that'll get everything moving faster. It's so odd because this is an i7, so it normally doesn't move slow. It more, normally moves really quick. Um, let's get back into CodePen. But for some reason right now, it's just moving slow. And I don't know why. Anyway, um, while it's deciding what to do, it's just bizarre. All of a sudden, it started moving slow. Um, it's, it can be found in my book. Um, you can just look up Spiderfoot in the internet, and it should. And it should. Um, find uh it should find it for you let me see if i open up another browser maybe it's just chrome being stupid i think there's I, something going on mine's been really slow today as well yeah um, that doesn't surprise me that doesn't <laughs> surprise me chrome is chrome is do, doing a lot of updates because i don't know if you've read they're doing a lot of stuff with the um extensions and making sure they're good and changing all sorts of stupid stuff so it could just be uh, Chrome. We'll find out in a minute because I'm going to look up the word Spiderfoot. All right, so this is Spiderfoot. And basically, when you're here, you got reconnaissance intelligence, blah, 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 download. And this is the Spiderfoot that I'm, that's free. This is Spiderfoot HX is the one that you get a little free, but it's not, you don't get as much. And so what you're going to want to do is this one. And you're going to want to follow the notes on how to use it and install it because what's going to happen is you're going to um, get it and you're going to stick it into a folder. And that folder, wherever you stick it, you know, it's up to you where you stick it. At some point, you're going to have to open up the E the uh, SFEX, and then when you do, you're going to get a dialog box. This is my security saying, do, allow it or not. You're going to get this dialog box, and what you're going to need to do is copy this HTTPX. It says, use Spiderfoot by starting your web browser in choice and browse to that specific URL, and that's going to be specific to you. And once you do that, once it's here and you do that, you're going to get the spider, you'll get Spiderfoot. I have it all already in my system linked and easy to go. Um, so that's why I, I, I just copied the URL and put it into one of my things here. So I have it sitting right, let me get down here, right here, already ready. So you notice the URL, it's exactly the same. So when I open it, I get right to the Spiderfoot page and right to my scans immediately. And it looks like my internet's back up. So with that, Let's go back to the original question. And Do, does, hang does on. this work on Apple? Oh, sorry. Uh, hang on one question at a time. Let me get back to the packaging <laughs> packaging thing. So what I'm going to do, because for some reason, Facebook was just being slow and I hate slow, is I'm going to go ahead and try x-raying in and see what we get. Sometimes when the site, social site's slow, I just x-ray. It's easier. Sometimes faster, sometimes not. We'll have to see. My internet could be going, slowing up again. Um, it has li it's Linux, Windows, and that's it. It does not work on um, Apple or whatever. But you know what? Just get a Windows emulator. If you download a Windows emulator, you can run Windows window things in Windows because it'll emulate Windows. Um, if you don't know about emulators, um, you can look up what they are. You can look by my book because I talk about it in my book. Although I'll be honest, I don't mention Windows emulators. I talk mainly about Apple and Android emulators, but you'll get the idea. 
Um, I actually have an Android and Apple um, emulator on this computer here for when I want to do things. Oh, wow, really, Google. Google's being slow now. Okay. So long story short, go into Facebook and search under Packaging Sales Engineer and see what you get. Because I'd be surprised if there aren't a bunch of people there. And if there is, you can use Zap Info to grab them. And Zap Info will cross-reference them, find you other info, contact info, all sorts of neat stuff. So I think you can do. I think you can probably find a bunch there um, pretty simply. So was there something else uh, to search on besides that? Since I think we kind of tore that one, we kind of handled that one. Well, we have a we have a comment about that one. It says, "Try the search on Bing and see what you get." Do you have any um, any advice about that, or is that something you'd like to do? Well, it's really interesting. You should say that about Bing. Um, Bing there are times that Bing is a better choice than 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 even Google. There are times, not all the time, but sometimes it really depends on what you look for. So I have this tool called Bing versus Google. So what I will do sometimes is I'll actually come in here and I'll put in what I want. So we're going to put in, we'll pick this one right here since I've already searched it. And we're going to search, we're going to see the difference between Bing and Google. And remember, if you use Bing, but you use it in on Chrome, a lot of your extensions will still work. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Whereas if you use Bing on um a web-based, uh, not web, excuse me, a Microsoft browser, you won't have all your extensions, despite what they say. Unfortunately, now we're going to have to wait for this to come through. But eventually, I find about mm, maybe 55% of the time, Bing actually does a better job than Google. And the other thing to remember is, and here's the thing that's really different, is Google limits your results. You're only going to see so many results. And then you're always going to have the sales stuff at the top. Bing doesn't limit your results as much. So you'll see more people. Now, this is an x-ray looking for something in Seattle, looking for a Java developer in Seattle. I love picking on Java developers. I think it's because everybody's looking for them. So we're going to let this go. Just We're going to let it go, and we'll come back to it when it says it's pulled up and done. So humor me on this. Uh, so right now, I just did in CodePen the same thing, a Java, and look at all the stuff I get. Now, what's cool is you can go into these. Maybe. <laughs> Might not let me. It is a lot. Oh, there we go. It only took a few clicks. And this is Toby. But what I like about this is right here, we got his username. And that's important because I guarantee you he's using that username somewhere else. In fact, I know he is. He's actually on GitHub. And the reason is because I picked him on purpose. I actually have looked him up before. And so that's a quick, simple way to find more people. Not everybody's going to be a GitHub. Some are on Stack Overflow. Some are on none of them. But some of them actually give you your email addresses. So that's really, really interesting how you can find people that way. Um, and so this is another of the code repository. I know we're picking on code a lot. Here we go. Bing versus Google. So on the right side, we have Google, who found 130,000. And the first couple is bullcrap. As a matter of fact, the first time you see a real live person is way down here. On the left side is Bing. You see a person right at the beginning, and you'll notice there's 388,000. So which one's working better for this particular search? The answer is Bing. So that's an example. It's not always this way. Sometimes Google does better. But remember, even though it says 130,000, I'm not going to see all 130,000. I'm going to see about 10 pages worth, and that's it. So that means I'm probably going to see about that the most I'll see is a thousand. We're over here. I'm going to get to see everybody. So, so Dean, yep. Before you move on, is there something similar to CSE.Google for Bing? You mean to run a custom search engine in Bing? Yes. Uh yes, but it's not free and it's expensive as hell. But can, let me show you something that's really cool. This is one of the things I've always loved about anything. Uh, search engine, da, 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 that'll work because it still uses Bing. By the way, it doesn't matter whether you're an MSN or any, any Microsoft site, you're still using Bing. See, it says Bing right there. So this is my search. Now watch this. Notice I'm in Bing, yet Swordfish is telling me they have info on this person. Zap info is right there. So like I told you, they work. Grab this URL. 
you ready? For, you guys are going to hate me for this, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to go right here for now. I'm going to put in that URL. I don't care what it says. And I'm just going to add the dial. And then I'm going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to press that. And look what I got. The same exact thing. It's, a, it's just called a URL bookmark. And it can work like a CSC. Just get rid of all this and create and get rid of all this. Do the same search. Copy this URL. Stick it into wherever you want to keep them. And um, I'm deleting the dial. And I'll show you what I mean. And this will pop up every time. And then you just add what you want at the end, which isn't that much different. If you open a CSC, you're going to have to add what you want. The difference is you're seeing where the difference. The, the, here's the only difference. This is exactly the same thing we put in for a custom a Google custom search engine for LinkedIn this way. Exactly the same. The difference is with the custom search engine, you don't see this. All you see is a little window and you type in what you want. Here you just see what see where you're searching. That's the only real difference. I'll give you a perfect example of this because I've got a boatload of these because not custom search engines don't always work well with certain things. Um, it's just a fact, it's just the facts. My internet now all of a sudden decided, hey, I think I'll work fast for you. So nice. Um, I've got a boatload of them. Right here, bookmark searches, I call them. So let's get an example. Um, let's pick on this one because this is actually one of my favorites. So I'm just searching this. I'm going to type in the word resumes. I'm going to type in the word hacker, hackers, and go. Everything's there. All I did was type in a few words, just like a custom search engine. There's my results. There's about 120 resumes in this particular folder. There's about another 17 there, and then I don't know after that. So that's it. So just do it that way and bang. That's all. That's all you got to do. In fact, and I could be wrong. I haven't tried this yet. Let's let's see if I'm right. Oh, look at that. Now I got it in Bing. That's all I had to do. So it's very expensive to create a custom search engine in Bing. Their product is expensive. And to be honest, it's not that good. But these work just fine. I can create them and make them work only on Bing. Here's one that I created that's really cool. That I can guarantee most people don't look for. I'm looking for resumes, CVs, via whatever, but I'm looking for phone numbers, but I'm not using the word phone number. I'm using the icons for phone numbers. Why? Because some people don't put in the word phone. They use an icon, believe it or not, even in LinkedIn. See, you don't see the word phone in here, do you? But you see the icon. You'd be surprised how many people do it that way. So I just create, and I can't create a custom search engine for that. Custom search engine will not take that. Not to mention the fact that I'm not doing an insight command, which is what most custom search engines are built on. So I just created a, uh, I just created a uh, bookmark search. It's what I call it. So that's all I did, and you can do it for almost anything. Um, I did it for all sorts of really cool stuff that is really like contact out. Here's a great example of a site. I just created a book a bookmark search. Now I could have created a custom search engine, but I didn't feel like creating another custom search engine. Um, and and this is what I get. So I'm looking for somebody who says they're a job developer. I open it up. Mickey Barton's email phone, senior job developer at PepsiCo. Well, first of all, I don't care. I can't see this. I really could give a flip less. You know why? Because I know where they work. I know where they live. I know their name. I can cross reference and find them pretty easy. And let me help you out, just so you know. Their email address for the spcglobal.com is M Bar it is uh, not M Barton. Um, God, I can't remember it because I looked it up once already. Um, Mickey Barton. It's M Barton at spcglobal.net, which would make sense. M and N. Now this one is M and R, so you got to wonder what the R is. Well, who knows? But like I said, I have enough information here to cross reference and find them easily, without even uh, without even trying hard. And this entire, and you can do that with everybody within Contact Out, or you can pay to actually see it. But they're expensive right now. They decided to up their their dollars, so I don't feel like paying. So I just go ahead and just use common sense and look people up. I mean, just this alone. Let, let's play the game. Let's go ahead and down this road. Let's go ahead and look up Mickey Barton. And we'll go ahead and do a Google search just to make life easy. 
Now, now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and put it in quotes, get to the end, put in the word Pepsi, and put in the word Java. And how much you want to bet? Uh, she's not in Alabama. She's in Dallas, Fort Worth. So that, that particular person is not them. But I'll bet you one of these people are. Let's see. Well, there's her contact out right there again. There's her Radaris. So, now, I mean, we've already found her, basically. I mean, literally, we've already found her on her Radaris. And her, her Radaris will give us the info we really want. Um, and depending on how update, I'm ever contracting as a senior job at Pepsi. So that means either this information's old or this information's old. But either way, there it is right there. So that's her. So we just found her. And if we're in founder in LinkedIn, you know you can find email addresses. There's plenty of tools. In fact, my son's writing an article today on the best email finders that for SourceCon, so you'll have that available soon and you'll know which ones are the best. So that was real simple. So are there any other questions or should, I mean we got a few minutes, so if there are questions, we'll do them. If there aren't, then we will go ahead and go to uh some of the other places to find people. We do have a few questions. Um let's one was a let's search... answer questions. This way I can okay, pick my let's do that. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. So we did get a question from Barbara about searching for a nurse. She wants you to show how to search for a nurse. Do you you'll you'll need more information for that though, won't you? No, not really. Because okay. searching for a nurse is almost, to be quite frank, is child's play. And I don't mean to say that to be disrespectful. It's just, it's child's play. And I say that only because I think a lot of people forget sometimes simple is best. Sometimes easy is best. You may or may not know this, but if they're a registered nurse, every state has a website. And if you're a registered nurse, means you're licensed you have to be on you have to have registered with the state and that means you can be found on the state website all you gotta do is go register i've been to 20 of the 50 states there are 50 right yeah 20 of the 50 states and um they all had a site like that to where i could just go right there right there on the site and find all the registered nurses in the area. Another thing that's really interesting is most hospitals actually have a directory of everybody that works there to include their nurses. And if they don't, if you x-ray into their site, you can find it really easy. At least I can, I know you can for all, for at least 50 of the, um, of the God knows how many hospitals up here in Seattle. I think they're more than 50, but I've done 50 of them. Um, so nurse, and then Facebook is really, 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 really good for nurses. Um, you'd be surprised how simple it is to find people in um, Facebook. So here's what we'll do. I'm going to use Zappin for this particular search, and I'm going to go into tools, and I'm going to do the search library. They've created a really cool library of, of searches. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick domain, which I'm going to pick on Facebook today because that's just what I feel like doing. And we're going to put do... Um, RN. Um, okay, let's do RN. Um, search. RN case manager, RN case manager, case manager. So let's try it. Let's spell out registered nurse to try to get one registered nurse. I think I spelled that right. If not, we'll find out in about two minutes. Search. There we go. We'll do. Let's do Portland. Let's pick on Portland, shall we? It only found me one. He's studying to be a registered nurse. So let's go back and pick on a different one. And it could be because I spelled it out. Uh, let's pick, you know, I want to pick on where I'm at. So I'm going to pick on where I'm at only because I've done it before. Okay, I only found two, so that tells me that the uh, register nurse should be RN, not re not that way. Um, you know what? I'm actually okay. I'm going to just open this one anyway because I don't really care. And we only get a couple. First of all, we don't need Washington in there. And, and it could be that Google's changed its stupid stuff again. They seem to be doing this on an almost regular basis now. Okay, we're going to get that first. 
Nursing Strong, Seattle Children's RN. So that's a list of people who are part of the, here we go. I like this much better. So um, these are all RNs, or at least they say they're RNs, or they are studying to be an RN, or whatever the case may be. In the case of this, you can use Facebook. That's just saying to grab all these people, and then it will find contact information. So now I'm going to cancel this, and I'm going to cancel this for a reason. Now that I've got this registered nurse the way I want, I'm going to spell out registered nurse, unless I misspelled it, which I may have. But yeah, I'm f I don't really care. I'm fine with three people right now. I doubt that's right. Registered. I probably spelled something wrong. I just want to show you. Um, how the Zap Info part will work. So I'm going to go ahead and go in here. It's telling me that you can only find the people on the page. So because it's an infinite scroll, we're going to extract. It's already extracted. And what it's doing up here is these circles, it's trying to find more information about these people. It may, it may not. It found an email address and a LinkedIn there, found an email address there already. And if you let it go, eventually it'll find more about everybody. And if not, that's fine because you probably have enough information to cross reference and figure out who they are. So uh, they're a registered nurse at Fairfax Behavioral Hospital, so all you got to do is find out what the email domain for Fairfax is, and you can email her directly there. So there you go. That's not hard to do. And I'm going to get, and then you can download it as a CSV. I'm going to get rid of this, by the way. Um, so it, it's not really as hard as you think to find registered nurses. Um, I'm actually a little surprised that this isn't finding any more because normally when I've run this, it, it's found a lot more than this. Um, okay, there's a lot more, but of course I don't have a location on here. So let's do that and then let's go to Seattle and see what it gets. See, now it only finds me one. So let's go to the RN. Yeah, there we go. Now I'm a little bit happier. More RNs. Yeah, much more. So there you go. Personally, me, I'd find groups. I'd look for RN groups in a particular location, like uh, tribe RN, travel RN, job, but, but I don't really care about all that. And I would go there, and then I'd try to see, see RN Seattle, who's hiring Seattle Registered Nurse Group. There's 72 members. There's 72 members of this group. That's where I would be going to try to figure out who all the members are and go from there. And there's a tool called um, Dig that if you put in uh, group members for Facebook, put in how many you're looking for. In this case, I think there's 412. So I'd put in 412 and in your email, it'll do the work and email it to you. And then you can do whatever you want. But that's one way to find registered nurses. Um, let me see here. I believe if I remember correctly. Um, let's see. Let's see. All the hospitals will have registered nurses, so you can go that way. The website. Oh, um, if I'm and I'm, I'm not sure where I remembered seeing that there is a site that can actually find. Well, you know what? Here's an easier way to do it. Let's just do this. And I'm going to cheat because I hate going into LinkedIn. And I'm sure you've done this, but we're going to cheat and do it my way. Hey, Dean, while you're searching, I just want to let everyone know that we thank you very much for being here. We're about five past the hour now. I, I so always go I over, though. <laughs> I, I think they, they would be upset if I didn't go over just a little. I mean, I've sometimes I've gone over three hours at one one time for one of these. Anyway, Did you'll you notice really? since my internet's slowing up again or something. What you'll notice that I I actually into LinkedIn just because I felt like it, and you'll notice that um, RN or registered nurse, and I asked for Gmail. So that means the results I'm going to get are going to be people that have a Gmail email address in their profile, and that's really important because that just makes my life so much easier. And so when I'm looking for registered nurses, the first place I like to go to look, to be quite frank with you, is I love going to the state sites because there's just a no brainer. And then I like to attack, go after that. I like to go after the hospitals because that's a no brainer. Those are both no brainers. They're, they're really easy to do. Um, and so why even worry about it? The other place I sometimes don't mind going is alumni sites. I'll go to a, go to a school I know has a really good 
nurses program, registered nurses program, nurses program, whatever. And I'll go into alumni. I mean, look at this. There's 29,500 RNs or registered nurses that have Gmail email just sitting right there in their profile. I mean, this one's right there in front of you. This one's right there. This one is probably hidden a little further. Oh, well, it's right there. Um, you notice the way she put her email, abigailwashington.gmail.com, not abigailwashington at. A lot of people don't always put it fully because they know LinkedIn might be stupid. Look at all these registered nurses sitting here. Uh, give me a location for your registered nurse if you're still on. And let's see if we can find them in your area. Okay. So you do, I'm going to pick on What? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not seeing her. I, I, she may be gone now. Well, it's too bad. You should have waited. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing. Yes, if you have LinkedIn, you can find them, but you aren't going to be able to find the ones only with a Gmail email address because LinkedIn doesn't allow that search to happen. We're not going to wait for this. I can guarantee you there's quite a few. Anyway, are there any other questions, comments, or are we pretty much down to 10 people and everybody else is gone? No, we still got 54. I what was 70 something. Any other questions? We don't have any other questions sitting. Um, if you, but I am going to have to run. I have to. I have to jump on a conference call. But it was That's really too oh bad. I yes, didn't, one I didn't more even, question. I didn't even get to show you this. Oh well. Oh there wow, you go. that's cool. 140 registered nurses in Seattle. What was the question? Frank, do you have? Oh, let me open this up real quick. <clears throat> Frank, Frank. The email finder from your son. The article. Is are you looking for the article, Frank? Yes, yes. It's gonna. He's writing it, and so it will probably get posted in the next couple of days. So just keep an eye on SourceCon. Cool, cool. Now, keep in mind the article, and it's he's going to say it in the article, he said, this is going to be based on our location and the types of things we looked for. So what you're looking for, where you're located, and the industry will matter. Some, you know, the order, we're not putting them in a specific order. Well, he's not. There's going to be the 10 that he thinks are the best based on our location, what he looks for, and where he looks. Not based on, he has no way of knowing which one's the best in Armenia or Romania, because we're not in Romania. And I'm not going to have him spend hours checking for every country in the world and see which ones work best there, because it's just too much. These are going to be based on us here in Seattle, based on whatever things he's looking for and whatever industries he's testing them on. But he's in the process of writing it right now. I know because him and I have talked, he's asked me my opinion on a few of them, and I gave him my opinion, and he's pretty much online with what I would have, with the ones that I would have thought based on because we've already done this analysis once before. Uh, him and I sat and spent a week in analyzing different tools, so we already knew the answers. So, but yeah, it'll be out soon. But keep in mind, I tell everybody all the time, first of all, almost every single solitary email finding tool known to man and God is sitting on the SSAR page, right in the upper right-hand corner under email and phone and finding tool. So they're all sitting right there. Um, well, we're, and the ones that I like the most have two stars next to them. All he's going to do is go ahead and um, pick the top 10. And that's if he can pick top 10. It may be that it's like after the top one, the rest of them kind of all the same. Or after the top seven, the rest are all the same. I have no way of knowing how that's going to turn out. Because he's the one doing it, not me. So, any other questions? I think we're good. I think we might have to hang up for the day. Works for me. We'll have another. We're gonna have another one in a couple of months, so we'll see y'all then. Yep, yep. We will have another. So keep your eyes on recruitingwebinars.com, um, and you'll be able to see when Dean's next webinar is published. Thank you so right. much for being here. This was fantastic. All right. Bye. Bye, Dean. Have a wonderful day. You too. Bye. Every <laughs> Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for coming and thank you for hanging in. This was a great, great webinar. Again, if you have any questions, please email me, ashley at recruitingdaily.com. Have a wonderful day. Bye.